Pastor Schonsenbach here from Living Waters Lutheran Church with our Sunday service uh, for uh, Sunday, August the 30th. The prophet Jeremiah in today's service speaks of the incurable wound of his suffering, yet finds God's words uh, the delight of his heart. When Peter doesn't grasp Jesus' words about suffering, Jesus tells the disciples that they will find their lives by losing them. Such sacrificial love is described by Paul when he urges us to associate with the lowly and not to repay evil for evil. In worship, we gather as a community that we might offer ourselves for the sake of a suffering world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. You are the treasured people of the Lord, a people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. O oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God of the universe. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of all the nations. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah's delight in the word of the Lord is contradicted by the heaviness of God's hand upon him and God's seeming unfaithfulness. God's tough love to Jeremiah says that if he repents, he will be allowed to continue in his strenuous ministry. Jeremiah is strengthened by the simple words, I am with you. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. 
for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Sunday is recorded in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning at verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Peter took him aside and he began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is come with angels in the glory of his Father, and he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. When I stand before you and wear this mask, that tells you something about me. It may be a reminder to me as well about who I am, a person who cares about you and therefore wants to do what I can to provide some basic protection from the spreading of the COVID virus. It reflects something about my identity, but when I wear a mask, it also serves as a reminder to me about some other stuff. When I wear a mask, I am reminded constantly, don't touch your face. It's a, a visual and a, 
and a, and a very physical reminder that says, wash your hands, keep your distance. It is a reminder to me of how or what the world is expecting from me. If I put this cross on, what does that mean? Is that a symbol that says something about my identity? Am I trying to show the world who I am? Or is there a deeper, maybe even more powerful meaning to this cross? Stick with me through this sermon. We want to get back to that. We want to answer that question. But first we need to recap what we've just read here in Matthew's Gospel. You might remember last week's Gospel. That was a high point for everybody, last week's Gospel. That was the one where Jesus was asking, who do people say that I am? And he heard all the answers. But as Jesus was wont to do, he pushed harder. He went deeper. He wanted more than just the hearsay answers. And so he cornered his followers and he pushed them. Not who do they say that I am, but who do you say that I am? You're the Christ, you're the Messiah. You're the Son of God, Peter says. Good for you, Peter. You got it right. You have come to realize and to understand God has imparted to you, filled your heart and your mind with a, with a knowledge, with a faith there that allows you to make that kind of confession. Oh my gosh, with that kind of stuff in place, that will be the foundation upon which we build the church. The foundation upon which we will call all of the future Christian fellowships together. That kind of confession. That was last week. A high point, a watershed moment for Peter and for the disciples and for all of us. But with that being assured and proclaimed and affirmed by Jesus, we now begin to move forward in Matthew's Gospel. Jesus will leave the land of Galilee and Cana and Tyre and Sidon. And the trajectory of his travels and his journey will change and Jesus from now on will head toward Jerusalem. And this is the first of three times that Jesus explains that he will go to Jerusalem and he will undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Jesus explains to his disciples that though they may have gotten this right in their confession of who he was, following Jesus will be hard. If you're going to follow him, this will not be an easy path or a simple journey. As a matter of fact, Peter tries to make it easier. You remember the last time Jesus was tempted by Satan? That was right after he was baptized. You know, Jesus was baptized by John in the, Jor in the Jordan River. He came up after that, filled with the Holy Spirit, and he went out into the wilderness. And when he was out there, he was tempted three times by Satan. You're hungry, you don't have to endure the fast. Turn the rocks into bread. You're fearful of the wild beasts and the animals that are all around you? Not to worry. Throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple. I'm sure the angels will sweep in and they will protect you. You simply bow down to me, says Satan, and I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. We will just cut to the chase here. 
We will make this as simple and pain-free and easy as possible. That's the temptation that Satan throws out in front of Jesus three times. And now Jesus explains that he will head to Jerusalem and his followers will be in tow and this is going to be hard. It will involve suffering. It will involve sacrifice. And Peter says, God forbid. Can't you be the Messiah in a simpler way? No, is Jesus' answer. You're just like Satan trying to find the easy way and there is not a simple, easy path forward. So get behind me. You'll notice Jesus does not send Peter away. He doesn't say, be gone with you. He says, get behind me and follow where I lead. And so Jesus describes the path upon which he will lead. In that path they will not, or they will have to, sacrifice. It will involve suffering. They may even die. But as Jesus describes the path that they will walk, as he asks them to deny themselves, it's important to understand what that denial is all about. It is not, not about putting yourself down. It is not about deprecating yourself, thinking less of yourself than you ought. It is not about caring for your sick aunt, as inconvenient as that may be. That is not what denying yourself is about. That's not what taking up your cross is about. Arthritis is not your cross. It is not any of those things. But what denying yourself and taking up your cross is, is it's willing to enter the suffering of the world. What Jesus shows us in this prediction, what Jesus shows us by what he must do, is he shows us a, a voluntary vulnerability. You follow Jesus and you will die. God, however, will resurrect you. You will lose your life, yes. And you will gain the life that God has set aside for you to live. For those of us who claim to be Christians, those of us who stand within our Lutheran tradition, we've been baptized at that font. We've been baptized there in the living waters. We had a life, our first life, and then we died our first death in those living waters. We were drowned in those baptismal waters. And we came up out of that water so we could lead our second life. The life of a baptized follower of Jesus. We would gain the life that God set aside for us to live. A life that was going to involve some suffering and some sacrifice. It was going to involve denying ourselves by getting ourselves out of the middle of all of this. And putting Jesus in the center of our life in the center of our community, in the, in the center of the world in which we live. In preparation for the time that we experience our second death, and go through that and emerge victorious for a third life eternal. So we learn from Jesus in this text that to be a follower of his, we voluntarily make ourselves vulnerable. 
I can think of no other God, present or past, who came into this world and died. The gods of Mount Olympus, be they Roman, be they Greek, they did not come to die. Jesus is on a mission to surrender his life and to have it raised up again so that we might know. We might know of God's immense generosity and love that assures us that we will never be separated from God's love. And so Jesus loses his life so that we might gain it. And he says to each one of us, follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself. Lose your life. Know that you will endure some suffering, some sacrifice. You will be called upon to be compassionate and generous and forgiving and loving. To be empathetic and caring at all times. Know that your task is about mending creation and that will require of you a fair amount of sacrifice and at times even some significant suffering. And so we follow, committed to the renewal of the environment and the world and the suffering that we will have to endure by surrendering some of our conveniences by stepping away from maybe as energy as cheaply as we might gain it otherwise so that we could mend creation. We will be called upon to be a servant church, to share and to give away some of our food, our water, our resources, our money, so that those who have suffered injustice or those who know oppression, those who know scarcity might live we will surrender and give up a bit of our life, a bit of our wealth, so that we might all gain the life that God intends. And so we support Family Promise. People this week are packing lunches to support the lunchtime ministry at St. Bartholomew. A new anti-racism team has begun here at Living Waters to help us to reflect on our own white privilege and the racism that seems rampant throughout our nation as yet another person suffers from gunfire from a police this past week. Mending creation requires of us Surrendering, sacrifice, suffering, and embracing generosity and grace. Jesus calls upon all of his disciples and says, if any want to become my followers, deny themselves, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. It gets me back to the cross. Pick up your cross, says Jesus. This is going to be hard. So we pick up our cross. But what does that cross say? The cross that we carry on your lapel or on a necklace or a lanyard or the cross that's emblazoned on your forehead at the time of your baptism is not put there to show the world who you are. The cross is there to remind you of who the world needs you be.
So just like a mask that sometimes serves dual purposes, so does the cross. The cross that we bear, the cross that we wear on our body, emblazoned on our foreheads at the time when we surrendered that first life to be raised to a new one. It's not there to show the world who we are. It's to remind us of who the world needs us to be. What do we gain if we gain the whole world and we lose our very soul? And so the good news of Jesus' prediction of his journey to Jerusalem, his death and his resurrection is that we will follow in that path through that life of generous engagement with the world around us to a life more glorious than we might ever imagine or deserve. Together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. 
uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Children of God, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, and live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Living Waters continues its tradition of being a generous community. A community willing to sacrifice and to share on behalf of others and in response to the needs throughout the world. We thank you for that ongoing support. This week, as part of our concerns related to our offering and service and caring, I encourage you to go to the ELCA website. If you Google this address, www.elca.org slash US Wildfires, it will take you to the ELCA's domestic disaster response web page where you might have an opportunity to share a special gift in support of those people in California and other places whose homes and lives have been ravaged by the wildfires. While we do not yet have a, uh, a special donation opportunity that is up and running related to the Texas, Louisiana, Gulf Coast people, I am certain that within days, probably by the time this uh, video goes, uh, is published, there will also be opportunity to respond to bring some relief to those who have been impacted by the hurricane. We encourage you to be generous, to offer yourselves to God and neighbor, and with the church throughout all the ages, to give thanks for the saving love of Jesus. Glory to you. Proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. As we gather separately and together in the Spirit, let us pray for the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the words, In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Caring for the church around the world, we pray for a spirit of ecumenical cooperation, for the health of congregations during this difficult time, for our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Hear us, God our Savior, in your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Seeing before us your good creation, we pray for the repair of what we have harmed, for polar ice, for lands dealing with oppressive heat, 
for the people of California and the Texas-Louisiana Gulf Coast, for fields ravaged by storms and by fire. Hear us, God our Creator, in your steadfast love receive our prayer. Facing so many internal problems, we pray for the strengthening of democracies, for peaceful resolution to conflict, for the people of Belarus, Lebanon, and Yemen, for researchers seeking a vaccine, for racial justice within our nation, for our legislators who assist the lives of the poor, for an ethical election campaign. Hear us, God, our mighty fortress. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Surrounded by people with great and hidden need, we pray for families frightened by the uncertain future, for those whose homes have burned down, for students deprived of effective education, for refugees and for prisoners. Hear us, God of hope. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. In celebration of new life and birth, especially for the new life and the health of Cecilia Albrecht, born on August the 25th, we pray as well for those who are sick and who are suffering, for those who are facing the coronavirus, for those without medical care, and for those whom we remember before you, Dick Thorpe, Becky M., Jody, Debbie Hoffman, Bill and Mary Ryder, Phyllis Gardner, Julia, Edna Saunders, Brad Kaler Jr., Kathy W.'s friend's child, for Jesse Galinkin and Betty Fink, for Jim Soder, for Aaron Albrecht, for Shannon Hemmel, and for teachers and students. Hear us, O oh God, in your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Mindful of all who have gone before us in the faith, we offer our thanks for all the saints, famous and forgotten, for medical workers who have died of the virus, for friends and family that we have loved, for those who have died under the hands of injustice, for the promise of everlasting life with you. Hear us, God, our homeland, in your steadfast love, receive our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with every spiritual blessing. Amen. May the God of faithfulness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.